The Life of Deanne, The Serpent's Sin of Envy, The Seven Deadly Sins. Deanne is the Serpent's Sin of Envy of the Seven Deadly Sins, as the title just said. She's a member of the Giant Clan and is thus much larger than ordinary people, including her fellow Deadly Sins. Her sacred treasure is the Warhammer Gideon, which she uses in conjunction with her inherent power, Creation. During the New Holy War arc, Deanne's strength is fully acknowledged by the former king of the Giant Clan, Droll, as he himself died protecting her after declaring her as his successor, making her the next potential ruler of the Giants, as well as the unofficial Giant Queen. She is also currently the wife to King, who is the current king of the Fairy Clan. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Deanne. We're coming up on 1 million subscribers and we'd love to hit it before the end of the summer. So if you enjoy the video, please check if you're subscribed. YouTube sometimes unsubscribes users from channels. So even if you think you're subscribed, you might actually not be, just give it a check. And before we get into the video, first a few words about today's sponsor, Webtoon. Do you love comics and manga, but hate that you always have to wait until the comic store around the corner delivers new stuff, which then you also have to pay for? Yeah, us too. But luckily for you, we know an easy fix. Webtoon is the world's largest webcomic platform and home to epic sagas, short stories, and daily comics. Available anywhere, anytime, and most importantly, always for free. You can download their app to have thousands of webcomics on the go to pass the long, boring hours in public transportation. Or better yet, go make your own webcomic and start telling your own story to everyone out there while earning some sweet money on the side. Because Webtoon serves as the roof for thousands of creators from different walks of life, it can be difficult to navigate the landscape and decide which stories to read. Here are two webcomic series that we think would be a good pick for you, and if you don't like them, you can go ahead and browse through the available Webtoon library yourself. Return of the Blossoming Blade tells the story of Cheng Myung, a Chinese warrior of ancient times who's part of Mount Hua, one of the ten great sects that rule over the land. The sects rally together to take a last stand against the evil Chun Ma, the leader of the demonic cult. When Chun Ma falls at the hands of the Blossoming Blade wielded by Chun Myung, all seems well, but the victory comes with a great cost. When Cheng Myung is faced with his own demise, he's given a second chance at life and sets out to redeem his past mistakes and to restore his sect to its former glory. But what might have been an easy task for a once powerful warrior proves to be an insurmountable obstacle for Cheng Myung, who's now a beggar reincarnated a century later when his country's origins have fallen into oblivion long since. If you don't want your typical hero story and want to see a hero gone bad, Villain to Kill has got you covered. When his closest friend gets murdered at the hands of the ones he was supposed to trust, Cassian Lee's life is thrust into darkness. Filled with revenge, his former allies bear the brunt of it, but not without killing Cassian himself. Similar to the aforementioned story, the protagonist is given another shot at life, but by the virtue of evil forces. Cassian must contend to find balance in himself, or else his new life as a villain, powered through his own evil darkness, is threatening to corrupt him and make him turn his back on his days as a good-hearted psyker who once sought to pursue the very thing he became. Both of these stories take on a different angle on what it means to be a hero and a villain. Reading them will make you question where you stand between good and evil and give you some insight into the complex dynamics that work within ourselves that determine our nature. Thanks again to Webtoon for sponsoring this video, and now, let's get started. 700 years ago. Many years ago, around 700 to be precise, Deanne left the Giants clan due to her hatred for fighting. After her departure, she formed two rock-like golems to accompany her, despite either of them being unable to talk. She was always alone playing with them, as there were no other living beings who would accept her. At one time, however, Deanne found an injured king lying unconscious on a riverbank and nursed the fairy back to health. King, who had taken a hard blow to his head, had lost all memories of his past and in his gratitude spent the next 500 years playing with and protecting Deanne. Deanne later met an old man, a human, who offered Deanne and King some food despite them being a fairy and a giant. King was wary of the old man and told Deanne to be careful around humans. Due to unknown reasons, Deanne ends up getting a fever, in which King panics due to fairies never having fevers and he goes out to get herbs. However, Deanne stops him, telling him to not ever leave her side since she doesn't want to be alone anymore. The old man who gave them food finds them and concocts an herbal medicine for Deanne's fever, eventually curing her of her ailment. As soon as Deanne gets better, she and King end up playing tag as King tells her that if she caught him, he'll grant her a wish. Deanne takes this seriously and catches King, but ends up getting her clothes ripped off in the fray, leaving her entirely naked, much to King's dismay. King ends up making her new clothes, and the two go to visit the old hunter's place, only to find more houses had sprung up around there, and that the man they believed was the hunter that they had met was actually the late hunter's grandson. After leaving the forest, King tells Deanne about marriage between two humans who love each other. Deanne asks if King loves her, which he blushes to, and agrees. Deanne thus chooses to use King's promise to make him always love her. He agrees wholeheartedly 
wholeheartedly. Later that night, King ends up remembering who he is through various flashbacks in his dreams and finds out that the village close by was on fire. King tells Deanne to stay back as he goes into town, promising to come back. Deanne waits in tears, hoping for King to return, only to find King return and strike her with a flower to her spine to erase her memories of him. Deanne eventually awakes from her slumber without any memories, but curiously picks up King's flower and walks outside. She rejoins the giant clan afterward. 16 years ago. Several hundred years later, Deanne had grown into a woman and was in the midst of being trained by Matrona to become the strongest giant warrior alongside other fellow giantess Dolores. One evening, Deanne overhears Matrona's plans to make Deanne the strongest giant warrior ever. Disliking Matrona's plans for her, Deanne makes up her mind to leave the village once more. She goes to find Dolores and run away with her, but Dolores declines. Dolores explains after much thought that the giant's village is the only place where they'll ever be accepted, and that there was nothing to fear once you've been accepted. Deanne leaves the village once more, and soon enters into a petty argument with a group of knights called the Knights of the Golden Weeds, who had discriminated against her for being a giant. Meliodas stops them, then questions Deanne if she was frightened. His having treated her as he would a normal girl of his size makes her feel as though she is his size, i.e. small. Deanne's encounter with Meliodas has her run straight home to tell Dolores that there's another place they could be accepted. When Deanne arrives in the village, Dolores is revealed to have been killed by mountain bandits on a bodyguard job. After Deanne learns that Matrona was the one who sent Dolores, she punches her in anger, upset knowing that her friend would rather die than wanting to fight. The day after, Deanne and Matrona are hired by the Knights of Leonis as mercenaries to help in taking down foreign savages. This was all a ruse, however, as the Knight's true objective was Matrona, looking to gain reputation and prestige for taking her down. Deanne and Matrona engage in battle against the traitorous Holy Knights. In the midst of the brawl, a poisonous arrow is about to hit Deanne, but Matrona takes the arrow in her place, severely crippling the giant warrior chief. Despite being weakened by the arrow, Matrona uses the last of her strength to take down Ganon and 330 other Holy Knights before supposedly dying. Deanne mourns Matrona's death before being captured by the Knights of Leonis and arrested under false crimes. She's sentenced to capital punishment under the pretense of killing Matrona out of envy, along with the deaths of 330 other Holy Knights in an attempt to silence all the witnesses. As her punishment was read aloud, Deanne is saved at the last moment by Meliodas, who gained legal custody over her. Sometime after this, Deanne officially becomes a member of the Seven Deadly Sins and becomes acquainted and friendly with all of the other members, including King, with whom she doesn't remember or recognize at all. Ten years ago. The Seven Deadly Sins, including Deanne, are summoned to the castle to meet the Great Holy Knight Zaratras. On their way, Deanne speculates that the Great Holy Knight might reward them for their last mission, though Merlin predicts that it will be a scolding from their superior. When they find him dead, they're ambushed by all the Holy Knights in the kingdom, with Deanne later being able to escape and reach the Forest of White Dreams, where she forced the indigenous hide-and-seek to hide her, lest she go on a rampage. Introduction Arc Deanne's wanted poster is displayed on a board within the boar hat. She's not in this arc, so that's, that's, all, that's all we got. Forest of White Dreams Arc the defeated prankster imps retreat to a sleeping Deanne, inadvertently leading Meliodas, Elizabeth, and Hawk to her. Deanne wakes up immediately upon hearing the imps apologize for allowing a holy knight to come through, since they believe Meliodas to be one, and then instantly grabs Meliodas with one hand. After realizing his identity, however, she cuddles her captain, and when Elizabeth introduces herself to be traveling with him, she then throws a tantrum. Meliodas, after calming Deanne, begins a discussion on the day the Seven Deadly Sins were framed for the Great Holy Knight's murder. However, he also reveals that he has almost no memories of that day, and then narrates the only memories he has, which end with someone apologizing to him, addressing him as Captain. This leads Elizabeth to speculate the existence of a traitor, and Deanne to declare that she'll help Meliodas no matter the foe. A few moments later, Hawk notices a gigantic thunder cloud in the sky, from which a lightning bolt descends and immobilizes all of them, with Elizabeth introducing the assailant as the Holy Knight, Gil Thunder. As he leads her away, ending her interruption, he expresses his desire to fight Meliodas and reveals his connection to Zaratras. Before the battle, Meliodas and Deanne easily break his immobilization themselves, and the former instructs the latter to not interfere. Deanne quietly observes the battle, watching worriedly when Meliodas is gravely slashed. When Gil Thunder continues attacking Meliodas and refuses to end the battle, Deanne grabs him and, ignoring his attempts to escape her grip, flings him into the forest. Sometime afterward, Deanne leaves along with her captain, Hawk, and Elizabeth. Meliodas decides to head for Bastet Dungeon, where Bond, the fox's sin of greed, is imprisoned, leading Elizabeth to object, citing his grave wound at Gil Thunder's hands, though he affirms her that it's not major. Then he passes out. Good job, Meliodas. Bastet Dungeon Arc Deanne, Elizabeth, and Hawk then travel to a town near the Bastet dungeon named Almari in order to have the severely injured Meliodas treated by a doctor named Dana. 
As she sits next to Dana's house, she's watched with discriminatory wariness due to her being a giant. It's not long until Deanne decides to head into the dungeon herself, retorting that Elizabeth would only be a hindrance when the princess asks to join. Elizabeth replies with her desire to be of use and that Meliodas was taking on more than he could handle. This angers Deanne, stating that Meliodas isn't just doing this for Elizabeth, this is just how he is. She continues, narrating the episode of her and the captain's first meeting and how he treated her at that time. As Elizabeth declares her wishes of wanting to have strength, Deanne declares her own wanting to be small. Abruptly, Hawk notices a huge swarm of poisonous insects flying towards Dalmari. Although initially plagued by her fear of insects, Deanne overcomes it and quickly kills them by raising huge pillars from the earth, much to the surprise of Frisia the assailant. While Elizabeth and Hawk are in awe of Deanne's ability, she leaps out of Delmari and, handing Elizabeth the duty of taking care of Meliodas, starts running toward the Baste dungeon. Deanne later on encounters Meliodas, Elizabeth, and Hawk when the three of them are walking to the Baste dungeon. She mysteriously seems to have no recollection of having defeated Frieza and having left for the dungeon previously. Deanne tries to recollect when she suddenly finds Meliodas and Elizabeth to have vanished and ruined to be standing in their place. When the Holy Knight claims that they've already captured them, she attacks him but is soon revealed to be under an illusion that deludes her into seeing ruin in Meliodas' place. She thus attacks Meliodas while believing that she's attacking the Holy Knight. Deanne and Meliodas' battle continues uninterrupted and only stops when Elizabeth manages to remove the source of Ruin's illusions, his staff's bell. Later, during the aftermath of Meliodas and Ruin's battle that ends in Ruin's defeat, actually Ruin's defeat, Deanne quickly defeats Frieza with a punch that utterly crushes the Holy Knight. Walking towards the heavily injured Elizabeth, Deanne removes her giant backpack, intending to place her inside and take her into the town for treatment. Elizabeth, however, requests to be taken inside Baste, to which Deanne complies. Inside, the group encounters Dr. Dana's daughter, Senate, and Bon. As Meliodas and Bon greet each other in arm wrestle, thus destroying the entirety of Baste as you do, Deanne simply watches as though this was a common occurrence. The group, along with Senate and the other villagers, return to Delmari, where Deanne looks after Elizabeth. At night, during the party, Bon is formally introduced to Elizabeth, and Deanne has to stand while eating due to her size. During the party, Elizabeth expresses her joy, but states that the events in Baste have reminded her all the more about the Holy Knight's frightening abilities. Deanne replies that while she isn't interested in human kingdoms, she has no qualms with fighting for Elizabeth since she was really cool that day, and did have powers. The power to move her and Meliodas' hearts. Deanne also asks Elizabeth whether she could henceforth address her as merely Elizabeth instead of Princess, and then tells the young lady to just address her as Deanne, rather than, you know, like, Lady Deanne. Capital of the Dead Arc Deanne and the others leave Dalmari Town to travel on the road again to find the other sins. Elizabeth apologizes to her for making them wait when she needed to heal, but Deanne says that she shouldn't worry about it too much. Meliodas tells them that they're going to the capital of the dead to find King. When they get to a village next to the capital of the dead, they decide to scavenge information on how to find King and how to get to the capital. Meliodas appoints Deanne as a poster girl and Bon as a chef. Deanne attempts to reel in customers, but fails as the village is pretty isolated. The Sins then realize that Bon has disappeared and decide to go out and find him. When they find Bon, he's fighting with someone. Meliodas bumps Bon on the head and instructs him to get back to work. He and Deanne then see Bon's opponent and recognize him as King, the Grizzly Sin. Deanne becomes happy and smiles at him, saying that she was happy they had found him. In response, King says nothing and floats away in the opposite direction. Deanne and the others then go back to the Boar Hat, and Bon serves food to a local girl named Ellen and her brother Luigi. The group acquires information from the two siblings on how to get to the capital of the dead, and are told that King had asked them previously as well. As they spoke, Deanne wondered what had caused King to react in such a cold way. As they wander the village, they come across the entrance to the capital. They're surrounded by small light pink flowers that swirl around them until they're transported to the capital. Bon separates from the group to find something, and King follows after him. As they walk around, a holy knight, Gila, appears, having gained access by partially killing herself. Meliodas senses how dangerous she is and orders Elizabeth and Hawk to run away to safety. Gila launches an attack and sends the two sins flying, and Meliodas manages to catch Deanne before she's impaled by a sharp crystal. Gila then comments that the capabilities of the Giant Clan and Deanne's ability creation are not very impressive. As a response, Deanne demonstrates her abilities by trapping Gila using her Sand Whirl. This fails, and Gila easily frees herself with a blast from the tip of her rapier. She forces Deanne back with another explosion, and Deanne attempts to crush her, but is blasted again as Gila dodges it. Bon returns and attempts to battle Gila using Snatch, but she reacts by using her power Explosion. Gila launches another explosion, but Deanne uses her body to shelter Meliodas, leaving Bon out to be impacted by the attack. King then appears to help them. Gila sends multiple attacks towards them, but King easily blocks them all with his sacred treasure, Chastafall. Gila comments on his spear power and insists on going four-on-one with the Sins. 
King refuses, saying that he wishes to go one-on-one -on -one and would rather let the other sins rest. Gil is caught off guard by King's powerful magic and is almost defeated. She attempts to give a final blow to King as he turns around, but is sent back to the living world by the force of Meliodas' full counter. The sins' bodies begin disappearing too, and they slowly return to the living world as the capital rejects them, because, you know, they're alive. When they get back, they find that Gila is still in a trance of near death. King insists on petrifying her, but Meliodas offers to do something to her before they leave. King, worried that Deanne might still be injured from before, tells her to rest, but Bond laughs and tells him that she could have been faking it the whole time in an attempt to get attention from the captain. King defends her and claims that Deanne wouldn't do a thing like that, but unnoticed by King, Deanne makes a face that suggests that, uh, that she actually was faking it. Elizabeth comments on how strong King is, which he responds to by saying that any of the Sins could have beaten her with ease if they were wielding their sacred treasures. King is disappointed as he finds out that the other Sins no longer have them and comments on their carelessness. Deanna just lost hers somehow. King chastises Meliodas and Bond for not having theirs either, but doesn't yell at Deanne as she puts on a little puppy-eyed look. He says that her losing it isn't her fault and that it couldn't be helped. But Meliodas and Bond, nah, they're just stupid. Visal Fight Festival Arc the next day, Deanne throws a tantrum at similarly not being able to accompany them into Visal. Elizabeth insists on staying with Deanne, and they head out to look for ingredients in the nearby forest after the other sins leave. In the woods, Elizabeth finds a mushroom-like monster, which Deanne tries to grab, considering it an ingredient. The creature, much to Deanne and Elizabeth's shock, releases spores that shrink both of them. Deanne wears Elizabeth's clothes and jewelry in order for them to not be lost, and then wanting to surprise Meliodas, enters the Visal Fight Festival under the name Matrona, with the shrunken Elizabeth hiding in the shrunken Deanne's bosom. The shrunken Deanne is first seen during the preliminary of the Fight Festival, in which she quickly and easily defeats many of the other contenders and advances. As Matrona is declared the winner, her facial appearance is now revealed to be identical to Deanne's, and she skips towards Meliodas, Bon, and King, believing that her secret had been revealed, but is only greeted with Meliodas' questioning her identity. He legitimately does not recognize her, because she is a normal size now. Irritated, Deanne punches him, storms off, and turns back when King asks her about her body and also Elizabeth's whereabouts. I guess that's another pretty important question. Deanne explains how she and the princess shrunk, upon hearing which, King recognizes the creature that did so. Deanne jumps over to Meliodas, merrily expressing her elation at being held by him. She then asks Meliodas to grope her as he gropes Elizabeth. There is so much groping that goes on in this show, man. When Deanne becomes upset at his refusal, Meliodas comforts her, explaining that he can't act as so to such an important individual as her. Deanne then watches Kane and Old Fart, King's disguise name, fight, and then Meliodas and Bond's battle. When the next battle is declared to be between Matrona and Hauser, Deanne hurriedly hands Meliodas the shrunken Elizabeth and the princess's pendant before leaving for the battle. After the battle, the final battle of the fight festival between Meliodas and Matrona is announced. When the audience expresses its dislike at the low seriousness of the battle, Meliodas declares his identity and that he'll now be taking over Visal. Bon and King also enter the ring, with Meliodas continuing that he'll give the town a chance. He orders them all to leave, lest they be massacred by the Sins. A few moments later, several gigantic flares rain down on the town. The attackers are shown to be Gila, Jericho, and another Holy Knight. The citizens, believing that the Holy Knights have come to save them, cheer, but are quickly threatened into fleeing. Elizabeth then understands the Sins' actions. They acted so in order to have the civilians evacuate. Meliodas notes that their opponents are much more powerful than earlier and instructs King and Deanne and Bond to separate. Deanne, acting upon her instruction, then reaches the area where Gideon is kept, but finds the weapon to not be there. As she wonders on her course of action, Hauser walks up from behind, declaring that he'll be arresting her since he believes that they're plotting to take over the kingdom again. Deanne then notices a civilian trapped under the debris and runs to help, just as Marmus walks up towards the two and proceeds to use a technique that multiplies gravity around Deanne by ten times. Deanne throws the civilian at Hauser as the earth collapses due to her increased weight. After being dropped into the pit, Hawk Mama appears before Hauser and Marmus, carrying Deanne's original clothes, and tosses them into the large opening. After Helbrim successfully defeats the rampaging Meliodas with a portion of Hendrickson's power, Deanne appears from the hole, smashing Marmus at the same time. Deanne later finds her sacred treasure, Gideon, and heads towards where Meliodas and Helbrim were fighting, where she saves Meliodas before Helbrim can take him away. Deanne sees the defeated Meliodas, and she goes into a deep thought until she grows furious at Helbrim for what he had done to Meliodas, and uses Mother Catastrophe to crash the area around her. Helbrum starts to retreat due to Deanne's great power, and Hendrickson orders him to escape, but Deanne then forms a giant floating mountain and crushes Visal, possibly killing Helbrum. Later, when the smoke clears, Deanne looks at the injured Meliodas, which makes him wake up and see Deanne. Deanne then gets so happy that she cuddles with him. Later, Deanne thanks Hawk Mama for getting her clothes and heads with the rest to a new location to find the other deadly sins or the next sacred treasure. 
armor giant arc. Deanne finds and hears Elizabeth saying that she'll return the kingdom back to the way it was. Deanne told her that she shouldn't worry about it and that she's free to use her powers since they're comrades. Deanne and Elizabeth later meet up with Bon and King who went to see Meliodas, who were shocked to see the mountain sliced in half that was caused by Meliodas. The Deadly Sins then hear from an injured knight that an armor giant was at the mountain and beat them all with ease. Meliodas then realizes that it's Gother. Once Meliodas explains the situation to Deanne, the latter then realizes that Gother was pretty big and wears armor. Deanne asks if she can go along, but Meliodas refuses and orders her to stay behind and protect the sick Elizabeth. Deanne is surprised but happy and agrees to stay behind. Deanne is later informed by Hawk that Cain came to the Boar Hat while he called him names, which Deanne told the latter that it was rude. When Cain ran out of the bar to see what was happening in the forest, Cain was surprised to see a giant in the area and wonders how she knows him. The Deadly Sins then return with Gother, where Deanne and Elizabeth were surprised to see Gother without his armor, but all of them end up celebrating. Gother later then uses his power Invasion on Deanne and Bon, in which he reveals that Deanne was lying about her true height, which is 30 feet tall, not 29 feet, much to her embarrassment. So in response, she smashes him into the ground repeatedly. When Gother reveals that Elizabeth is in love and that it could be Meliodas, King and Bon try to calm down Deanne, but are surprised to see her pass out due to drinking. Honestly, kind of a nothing arc for Deanne. Just gonna, just gonna throw that out there. Kingdom Infiltration Arc Deanne chats with Hawk Mama about what she eats, which Deanne doesn't understand, and then gets mad when Meliodas needs comfort from Elizabeth as she breaks the window. As Meliodas explains his reason to head out to Leonis to get his sword back, Deanne wonders why the demons haven't been released yet. Meliodas reveals that there are more pieces to the Coffin of Eternal Darkness since the seal is incredibly strong and that there would have been a sign. Hawk asks why the Holy Knights are after Elizabeth as well, until a mysterious Holy Knight appears and reveals that Elizabeth is the last key needed to revive the Demon Clan. The mysterious Holy Knight takes Elizabeth, in which Meliodas orders Deanne to toss him to Leonis, along with Bon and Gother. Deanne grabs hold of the Deadly Sins as she tells Meliodas to bring back Elizabeth and yeets them towards Leonis at full speed. Deanne and King start traveling towards Leonis by foot, along with Hawk Mama, planning to help out as they're the only ones possessing their sacred treasures. She asks King if he had ever seen Meliodas so angry before, and King replies that it was his first time seeing him like that. Deanne starts wondering if she wishes that she was the one who was kidnapped instead of Elizabeth. Would Meliodas be as angry as he was? King tells her that Meliodas would definitely go to save her since they're important friends, and states that he himself will definitely come for her. Deanne replies that that makes her happy, but King wonders if he actually did anything in cheering her up. He soon realizes that they should hurry, and summons his pet, Oslo. He reveals its ability of teleportation and tells Deanne to enter Oslo's mouth. They eventually realize that she's too big for the Black Hound's mouth, so Deanne tells him to push her in. King blushes at the sight of her rear end and quickly orders Oslo to open his mouth wider. Deanne arrives at Hendrickson's magical research facility and is immediately questioned by Dreyfus, asking for her goal. Without hesitating, the Deadly Sin demands to have Elizabeth returned, leaving the Great Holy Knight only confused. Hauser becomes more and more nervous, and Jericho decides to deliver the first attack. Deanne straightaway swings Gideon, destroying part of the building and blasting Jericho away. Gilthunder then proceeds to begin attacking, and under Dreyfus's commands, Hauser reluctantly enters the battle as well. However, despite using a combined technique, Deanne is able to fend it off. When she attempts her next attack, Dreyfus easily blocks it and uses his ability Break to pierce through her chest. After being heavily damaged by Dreyfus's break ability, Deanne briefly collapses on the floor while coughing out blood. Helbrum returns to the group of Holy Knights after evading Deanne's attack by sacrificing some of his subordinates. Deanne attempts to move again, but Dreyfus uses Pierce to damage her leg, and is sent flying away to the city by the Great Holy Knight's technique, Pulverize. When she crashes into the buildings and astonishes the civilians, Dreyfus proceeds to use an incantation orb to project his voice throughout the kingdom, stating that the Deadly Sins have infiltrated Leonis to stage an attack. The civilians begin attacking and throwing rocks at the confused Deanne, who tries to explain what's happening to the people. Helbrum proceeds to destroy more buildings to frame Deanne as a villain. Gila notices the trickery and demands Helbrum explain his actions, which he replies by saying that the Sins will play the role of the villains so that the Holy Knights can be heroes. Suddenly, Zeal notices Gila when a building starts collapsing above. Without thinking, Deanne leaps and dives forward to protect Zeal, causing herself to be completely immobilized by the collapsed building. As the Holy Knights prepare to kill her, Hauser and Gila step in to protect Deanne. As Gila and Hauser initiate a suicidal battle against their former comrades, Deanne tells Zeal to stay down while she protects him from the destruction caused by the two rogue Holy Knights combined technique, Bomb Cyclone. As Dreyfus and Gilthunder flee the battlefield due to Dreyfus's injury, Helbrim is left behind to finish them off while he calls upon Call of Inferno, which nearly kills Hauser and Gila, until Deanne stands up and smashes Helbrim before he can do any more damage. 
Deanne gives Zeal back to Gila and tells him to get to safety, but Hauser refuses, saying that she should worry about herself more than others for once, and then she smiles in response. But Helbrum rises up and strikes Deanne with Killer Iceberg that heavily damages Deanne even further and puts her into a near-death situation. Helbrum unleashes a barrage of ice attacks to finish her off while suddenly King appears and saves Deanne. As King tries to find the one who injured her, Deanne tells King that it wasn't Gila or Hauser as they were the ones trying to protect her until she passes out. As King protects her from Helbrum's roots attack, Deanne wakes up for a moment and says that she remembers this smell and says King's true name, Harlequin, as she sheds tears. After Helbrum is killed by King, King flies towards the injured Deanne and apologizes to her for getting her in trouble, but Deanne instead thanks him for saving her. King tells Deanne to leave everything to him, but she then says Harlequin, which surprises King until Deanne says that the name sounds nostalgic to her, but she doesn't know why. King smiles and says it could have just been a dream. Deanne later starts forcefully getting up while King tries to convince her to rest due to her injuries, but Deanne refuses as Elizabeth needs to be saved. As everyone gets ready, they head out to Hendrickson's location to save Elizabeth. As Jericho transforms into a demon and is about to kill the slowly transforming Gila and her brother Gustav, Gother along with Deanne appears and stops Jericho. Gother uses invasion on Jericho and Gila to try to keep them calm. Deanne is shocked and disgusted with Hendrickson, who reveals that he used Enslavement of the Dead to revive Helbrum and used him as a slave to fight off King. Seeing Elizabeth taken away by Hendrickson, Deanne pleads for her friend not to go. While all this is happening, it allows Jericho to strike back and injure Deanne again. As Deanne is fighting off Jericho, she overhears Jericho saying that she wants to be stronger than her brother, which makes Deanne believe that Jericho is still alive inside, but doesn't know what to do. As Deanne refuses to kill Jericho, Bon appears and removes a strange plant from Jericho, which cures her and returns her to normal. Deanne is amazed at Bon's skill, and she tells Bon and King to go cure the hybrid demon, while Deanne and the others go save Elizabeth and help Meliodas. Later, Deanne and the remaining Deadly Sins appear to face Hendrickson in a final battle. As Hendrickson taunts the Deadly Sins for being outnumbered due to the new generation transforming into demons, Meliodas points out that he should check again. Hendrickson senses that all the new generations have been stopped as they return to normal due to Bon and King's help, while the other Holy Knights are currently surrounding the ruined castle. Hendrickson, however, is joyful to admit that the situations become more interesting, and wondered how the Deadly Sins defeated the new generation so fast, but admitted that the Sins can't defeat him. As the battle rages on with the Deadly Sins working together to fight against Hendrickson, Hendrickson admits that he's invincible due to the demonic power. But when Deanne traps him with double hammer, Meliodas explains to Hendrickson that demonic power can heal wounds, but if he's not immortal or something, it would have been pointless as the damage would still remain. Hendrickson then smashes Bond into a wall where he found the demon corpse and returns to Hendrickson, questioning him on where he found it and why does he have it. Then the wall breaks down to reveal the demon, which shocks the Deadly Sins. Deanne is, of course, shocked and disgusted by the demon, but when Bond slams Hendrickson down into the floor, Deanne is left behind due to her size while the other Deadly Sins follow Hendrickson. When Hendrickson takes the Grey Demon blood, Deanne, along with the other Deadly Sins, are blasted out of Merlin's old castle while passing out. Deanne, however, is awakened and uses Rising Meteor on Hendrickson, sending him up towards the sky because of the rising ground. Deanne tells King to finish him, and King almost does by using Form 8 until Hendrickson uses Dark Nebula, which easily defeats King and Deanne. Deanne watches in tears as Hawk dies while protecting Elizabeth and Meliodas. When Elizabeth unlocks her hidden power and heals everyone, Meliodas thinks of a plan and asks Gother to use his ability to spread the message. But King is in tears, trying to reveal to Meliodas that Gother was killed and that his head was chopped off. But to Deanne and King's horror and shock, Gother is fine as he's searching for his glasses while holding his head. Once Gother spreads the message through broadcast, King, along with the other Deadly Sins, attack Meliodas and Hendrickson with all of their powers. However, Deanne is in tears for attacking Meliodas. It's revealed that Meliodas is charging up for a revenge counter, as it is Meliodas' ultimate technique in which he finally killed Hendrickson, ending his reign. Deanne watches in sadness as Elizabeth is taking care of Meliodas' wound, feeling insecure about herself again. Once Bartra returns from Camelot with Merlin by his side, he forgives the Holy Knights and clears the Deadly Sin's name for their crimes. As the others grieve over Hawk's death, the black matter on the pig's dead body starts to disappear and reveal that Hawk is still alive, but shrunken. Of course, everyone is joyful for their friend being alive. Post-Kingdom Infiltration Arc As Leonis is being rebuilt, King is shocked to see Deanne in regular size and in different clothes, but reveals that Merlin offered her magical pills called Minimum Tablets that allowed her to shrink for seven hours as her clothes are being repaired. King then continues to stare at Deanne, which makes her ask King if she looks strange in Western clothes or being small in general. King, however, reveals that he doesn't care if Deanne is big or small, she's still Deanne, which makes her smile. King asks Deanne if she could invite Meliodas to the National Foundation Festival, despite calling himself stupid in his head because he actually wanted to ask Deanne, but he couldn't, like, commit to the bit? 
but to his shock, Deanne asks him out instead. The next day, Deanne wears the new outfit that Merlin made for her, which she of course loves, despite having a hard time choosing between the two that she made, which confused the mage as she didn't make two. Deanne is greatly upset when Bond doesn't wear his new outfit, as Deanne and King picked it out for him while being rude about the outfit as he didn't care enough to notice it. During the festival, Deanne, in her regular size, serves food and ale to the patrons of the Boar Hat in celebration from night to dawn. Later, back in her true size, Deanne attends the award bestowment ceremony with the rest of her fellow sins except Bon and King, who left for the new Fairy King's Forest and Escanor still missing. When the King, not King, the King, decides to go on with the ceremony without the missing three, Deanne and her fellow sins are surprised of Meliodas' sudden objection due to some holy knights talking behind his back, revealing to be three members of the Pleiades of the Azure Sky. Witnessing one of them challenge Meliodas, Deanne and the others are confident that it's obviously their captain's win, as the Dragon's Sin of Wrath defeats the Platinum-ranked Holy Knight easily. The Serpent's Sin of Envy remains clueless to Hawk's sudden breakdown of his inflated ego after the Talking Pig read her power level. After the issue is settled and the ceremony over, Deanne accompanies the group heading to the castle and meeting with the King before running into Gilthunder, Hauser, and Griamore. At the throne room, the Serpent's Sin of Envy is slightly disturbed when Bartra informs them of the Omen of the Holy War still growing, and a growing threat in the south of Britannia, Camelot. Outside of the castle, Deanne discusses with the group before experiencing a sudden earthquake, unaware of the Demon Clan's revival, and notices that Meliodas' expression has changed into an angered look, with sweat dropping in fear. Albion Arc Having regained her lost memories at some point, Deanne switches to human size and searches around the capital looking for King, only to bump into Elizabeth in her new clothes. Escorting the princess to the boar hat, Deanne expresses her frustration of King not being there with her, and later on supports Elizabeth's love for Meliodas after revealing that she now remembers her past with King as she cries. The two waitresses come across a confused and puzzled Zeal, who doesn't even remember who he is. Deanne spots Gila and Gother, who quickly rush over to them to help Zeal, but Gila doesn't even remember who her little brother is. A confrontation with Gother soon after reveals that Gother had manipulated both siblings' memories. Gila's memory manipulation occurred during the battle between Bon and Meliodas. After coming to the conclusion that feelings of love are what caused this change, Gother switches from studying friendship to studying love using Gila as his makeshift lover. Gother attempts to convince Deanne that the memory manipulation was necessary as it's what helped suppress the demon blood within Gila at the time. Revealing that he's made Gila's memories much happier, Gother asks Deanne and Elizabeth which set of memories Gila would be happier with. Deanne disagrees with this whole thought experiment, asking Elizabeth to go get Meliodas and Merlin. Gother attempts to stop Elizabeth, but is stopped by Deanne. Here the battle between the sin of lust and the sin of envy begins. After using Blackout to render the surrounding unconscious, Gother attacks Deanne with several shots of their twin bow, Herit. However, Deanne manages to evade them with her dance. Deanne tries to counterattack with her golems, but Gother uses Hijack to control them. Deanne attacks strongly with her golems, crying out to Gother to open their eyes. Soon, Deanne comes out victorious after defeating Gother while still suffering some injuries while telling Elizabeth to look after Gila and Zeal while Gother sulks in his defeat. After Meliodas commands Gother to restore Gila and Zeal's memories, Gila then apologizes to her unconscious brother for how she treated him. Deanne then observes as Merlin uses her absolute cancel on Gother. She's then surprised to see her teammate was actually a doll. There, she understands that Gother's words about getting a heart were serious, and it also explains the whole, uh, Gother being decapitated thing? Deanne is later taken to Camelot along with the others to stop an Albion from destroying the kingdom. After Meliodas destroys the demon, another demon appears which happens to be Galand of the Ten Commandments. While Galand has a hold of Meliodas in their battle, Deanne takes revenge as Merlin brings her back to her original size, but Galand has other plans and, uh, takes her out of the battle. Ishtar Arc Later, she begins to gradually lose her memories about the Seven Deadly Sins because of Gother's powers, Lost World. As she finally forgets about the whole time spent with her comrades, she leaves Camelot to come back to her hometown, Megadozer. On her way to the homeland of the Giant Clan, she meets Galand again, along with Monspeed, another one of the Ten Commandments. As her situation seems desperate, she's unexpectedly saved by Matrona. Deanne is disconcertedly happy to see her alive, but Matrona hits her in the stomach, leaving her unconscious. The two manage to escape from the two demons. Great Fight Festival arc. Sometime later, Deanne is shown watching Matrona dance. Upon pointing out that dancing looks more fun than fighting, Deanne is surprised to hear Matrona state that her fighting days are over and that she would become a dancer. Deanne begins dancing, but Matrona considers it terrible, much to the Deadly Sin's disappointment, scolding the kids who playfully make fun of her, but quickly changes her attitude when Matrona talks about Zalpa. She explains that it was her kindness in sparing Zalpa that led to her own survival and thanks Deanne for it. Matrona mentions the Ten Commandments, and instinctively Deanne falls to the ground, remembering her experience with them. 
After some encouragement from Matrona, she aggregates her courage and decides to try dancing once more. Matrona then explains the concept of Droll's dance and the legend surrounding it which fascinates Deanne, despite being confused by the explanation. However, she decides to practice by herself, where she begins questioning her memory loss and the changes that have been made. Her reminiscing is cut short when she experiences a similar fear to that of the Ten Commandments. She notes the presence is weaker as a blue demon passes by her and proceeds to examine the pamphlets it was carrying. After Zalpa's children, Sol and Della, are injured and can't be healed again, Matrona decides to head out and join the Visal Fight Festival and find a way to heal them. Deanne follows Matrona and brings her Gideon after Zalpa orders her. Arriving in Visal, Deanne and Matrona discover that the whole city is turned into a giant maze. In order to reach the tournament place, both of them must then pass into the center. Deanne and Matrona try to cheat by destroying the maze wall and jump through it, but fail as the wall keeps regenerating, proving that the maze was created by someone. Somehow, Deanne gets separated from Matrona and encounters Elizabeth and Hawk, who also got separated from Meliodas and the others. Due to her memory loss, Deanne shows her hostility to Elizabeth due to her being a human and refusing her help. However, Deanne prevents Elizabeth's death from falling into a gap, and in return, Elizabeth effortlessly removes giant leeches that attack Deanne, making her start to believe Elizabeth's claim that they're actually friends and know each other. Deanne, Elizabeth, and Hawk are ambushed by multiple fake Meliodases, who are later revealed as prankster imps, and are immediately saved by Gilthunder and Hauser, who also participated in the festival with the others from the Boar Hat. Deanne, still suffering from her memory loss, of course, doesn't recognize them, even one of her seven deadly sins comrades, King. Later, an Earthcrawler appears and attacks them. Deanne requests Hawk to be on Elizabeth's side while she, Gilthunder, and Hauser perform a team attack to defeat the monster. Just as they cooperate, the Earthcrawler begins to counterattack, making Deanne, Gilthunder, and Hauser cornered. However, Gilfrost, a participant of the festival, comes to their aid and easily defeats it. Deanne's group finally reaches the end of the maze, where all are received by two of the Ten Commandments as participants of the fight festival. There, one of the Commandments is asked to create a proper battlefield, surprising both Deanne and Matrona upon hearing that his name is Droll. When the participants are divided into teams of two, Deanne is paired with King. King is happy to see her, but Deanne, still without any memory of him, is confused when he says her name. Deanne and King are placed to fight with the warriors of Droll and Gloxinia, the Golem and the Flower Doll. Deanne, believing King to be a human child, puts him inside her breast to protect him while she confronts their opponents. Deanne worries when King begins to bleed, even though he hasn't received any damage, but it's revealed that he's just getting a nosebleed from you know, uh, the, the thing that she did. When Deanne's knocked down by the servants, King asks her to let him fight. Deanne refuses, claiming that a human child shouldn't even be at the festival. King tells her that he's a fairy and a member of the Seven Deadly Sins like her, but Deanne doesn't believe him because he has no wings. King tries to prove it by transforming into his fat form, scaring Deanne and causing her to throw him out of her chest. When King defends the servants with Form 5, Increase, and Form 2, Guardian, Deanne is surprised that he really is a fairy. When he tells her that his real name is Harlequin, she gets confused about what to call him. King tries to confess his feelings, but she interrupts him by telling him that the Guardian had been defeated. Deanne blocks a hit from the Golem, receiving a bruise on her head, allowing the Flower Doll to restrain her from the neck with pods. When the Golem is about to pierce his heart, King releases the true form of Chastafall, stopping the Golem with True Guardian. When King tells her that he won't allow her to go through more suffering, Deanne wonders what kind of relationship she has with him. Deanne is impressed to see that King manages to defeat the Golem in one blow, but is concerned about him to see him exhausted. There, the Flower Doll catches her, but King saves her with true increase. After the doll is defeated by a stroke of true Chastafall, Deanne jumps to save King from the attack of the Droll Golem, stating that he can't let go that he's risked his life for her. Deanne asks King to tell her what it is exactly that they have between them when they finish the battle. She tries to face the Golem, but to no avail. King explains to her that Golems without a constant image can't have real strength, so she must create something in what she believes from the bottom of her heart. Deanne then creates Golems in the image of her friends, Matrona, Elizabeth, Meliodas, Hawk, and King. The first three get to fight the Droll Golem, but are easily defeated. The King Golem, however, defeats him in one fell swoop. Deanne says the Golem is like that because she sees King as someone really strong. When Escanor and then Meliodas attack Droll and Gloxinia, Deanne ends up being taken along with everyone else as a hostage by Droll in their hands on the ground. Inside, all of them are forced to consider retiring. When Matrona insists on staying for Stol and Della, Deanne tries to convince her to trust her and that they'll be fine if they escape. Deanne is teleported to Leonis along with the others by Gilfrost. There, all observe through a crystal ball the fight of Meliodas against Droll and Gloxinia. When Meliodas' identity begins to be questioned, Deanne affirms that he's a good person. When Meliodas is confronted by the other Ten Commandments, Deanne shows Matrona that despite the immeasurable power they possess, they could never have helped Sol and Della. Along with the rest, Deanne can't do anything but mourn, as Meliodas is killed by Esterosa. Memories of the Holy War Arc 
After Meliodas' death at the hands of the Ten Commandments, Deanne and King take refuge in the Fairy King forest along with Matrona and her family. One month later, with her memory still lost, Deanne takes a bath in a lake but is horrified when she discovers that King is also there. After hiding her nudity, Deanne blames King for not checking over the area before. Then there's some, uh, comedic double entendres that are going on, where Deanne thinks King is talking about one thing, but he's actually talking about his wings. But after this, they uh, both go back to seeing each other naked. After getting dressed, King discusses with Deanne about Meliodas' death and the rampart of the Demon Clan over Britannia and the eventual fall of Leonis into his hands. When Deanne asks why the forest wasn't attacked by the demons, King reveals that the forest is protected by a magical barrier that prevents even the Ten Commandments from detecting it. Deanne thanks King for allowing her and Matrona to hide there. However, King claims that Droll and Gloxinia could still find it, you know, since one of them is a giant king and the other one is an ancient fairy. Deanne claims that they must remain vigilant, although she recognizes that in their current state, any of them have an opportunity against the former kings. Upon reuniting with Matrona, Deanne and everyone in the forest have a good moment to dance and have a good time. However, King and Deanne suddenly disappear. Droll and Gloxinia resurface, abducting King and Deanne inside their Oradora, unleashing a battle between them. Deanne attacks Droll repeatedly with Gideon, but the latter stays unimpressed at the giantess's continuous attacks, enduring every strike. Deanne is then pushed back by a single blow from Droll's palm, saved only by her heavy metal. Impressed by his strength, Deanne decides to use her strongest technique and uses Crazy Rush to attack Droll with enormous earth punches. Initially, Deanne thinks that Droll evades her attacks because he's afraid of them, however, she then realizes that he's actually dancing, and thanks to that, all of her magic is dispelled. Droll then fights back and beats her into the ore tree's wall, leaving her fatally wounded despite her using heavy metal. Droll claims to Deanne that a giant's strength doesn't come only from their muscles, but its connection to the Earth. However, instead of killing them, Droll and Gloxinia declare that they'll train both of them in order to be surpassed by them. Gloxinia then uses Form 7, Moon Rose's Drop of Life, to completely heal her wounds. King and Deanne are skeptical at first, asking about Droll and Gloxinia's intentions. The two explain to them about certain crossroads in their fight against the demons 3,000 years ago that made them take sides with the Ten Commandments. Gloxinia and Droll declare that they want to put both her and King in a trial to verify the rightness of their decision, adverting that they'll either grow or die as a result. Deanne accepts, trying to persuade King of the opposite at the same time. At that time, Droll and Gloxinia use a spell that was taught by them by an old and dear friend, releasing a giant wave of light. Upon awakening, Deanne is then sent with King back to the past during the Holy War and finds herself in the body of Droll 3,000 years ago. While they wonder what's happening to them, they both feel the magical power of a member of the Ten Commandments, but are surprised to discover that it's Meli Meliodas, who receives them naturally. Deanne and King don't understand how it's possible that he's still alive, which Meliodas takes as a joke. Although they try to explain to him that in reality they're not Gloxenia or Droll, Meliodas doesn't take them seriously. There, someone else arrives claiming that the reunion is complete, dealing with someone who looks exactly like Elizabeth. However, seeing his huge white wings, Deanne and King realize that it's a goddess. When Elizabeth and Meliodas leave the scene, Deanne and King go after him. There, King tells Deanne that they're in Britannia of 3,000 years ago, before Droll and Gloxinia became commandments, but doesn't understand how it's possible that there's a goddess equal to Elizabeth. He also tells Deanne that they must maintain the appearances of Droll and Gloxinia at the moment. When Meliodas reveals that the Valley of the Fossils was being attacked by the Demon Clan, Deanne and King are shocked to witness the horrible massacre perpetrated by the hordes of demons. Seeing Meliodas fight, both are impressed with the incredible power of him. There, a demon with an incredible power approaches them. King tells Deanne to run, but Meliodas warns that it's called Medeos, the piety of the Ten Commandments, and that they'll activate their commandment if they flee from him. When Calmadios attacks Deanne, an annoying king avoids his attacks and releases a powerful raid over Calmadios. Deanne reveals to be all well, impressed with the incredible endurance of Droll's body, even without heavy metal. In the end, Deanne manages to use Gigapick and Gigalock to beat Calmadios along with King and Meliodas' full counter. Although King says that they shouldn't let down their guard given the large number of demons that remain, he and Deanne are surprised to discover that everyone's left. Elizabeth reveals that she's convinced everyone to abandon the battle, which surprises Deanne and King. There, a human thanks them for saving them and identifies them as members of the Stigma, the alliance between the goddesses, giants, and fairies. Deanne and King follow Meliodas to the headquarters of Stigma, the Fairy King Forest. On the way, Deanne talks with King about the previous battle being the trial that they must suffer, but King points out that it wasn't since they're still in the past. In the light of grace, all are received by the Archangel Ludosiel. Later, Deanne is training along with a couple of giants, beating them easily. King tries to tell her about the great concentration of magic that he was sensing, but Deanne doesn't listen to him. Soon afterward, the demons start moving toward the headquarters of Stigma, following a trap planted by Ludosiel. 
Deanne leaves with King to support Meliodas. After watching Elizabeth save Derriere and Monspeed from their Endura transformation, Deanne stops Ludociel's attempt to kill the Two Commandments, claiming that it's a cowardly action. There, Deanne notices a loss of magical power from the forest, and she and King rush there. On the way, Deanne talks with King about their experiences, claiming that she can understand the feeling against who will kill a dear friend and matches with King's surprise for the Goddess Clan violence. However, they're both surprised by Gother, who reveals himself to be a member of the Ten Commandments. Deanne hurries King to the forest, but he has his own ideas of preventing Gother from using his power on her. King reveals that it's Gother who stole her memories, so Deanne demands him to restore them, but King reminds her that it happened in the future. Asking about it, both reveal to Gother their true identity, something that Gother finds fascinating. However, he starts to act strange, like he was talking to two people at the same time. There, Gother reveals all the truth about how he's a puppet created by the real Gother about 500 years ago when he was imprisoned after being forcefully bestowed with the role as the selflessness commandment, using the puppet as a way to maintain contact with the outside world. Deanne is shocked by this revelation. There, a portal opens and the true Gother appears before both of them. Upon knowing that the humans are taking a rebellion against Stigma, King decides to rush into the forest while Deanne stays behind to talk to Gother about ending the war. After King leaves, Gother asks Deanne if he's her lover, which embarrasses her. Gother affirms that they both have a deep and sincere relationship since none was affected by his commandment. Deanne asks if he really can finish the Holy War, which Gother says it's possible. Deanne explains that the war is over in the future that she's coming from, to which Gother says that his death won't be in vain then. Deanne is scared at this claim, asking what would happen to the doll if he dies. After a few words of farewell with his doll, the real Gother asks Deanne to take care of watching his doll in the future and guide him on the right path. Deanne accepts with pleasure, and Gother, in his thanks, restores her memories. However, this conversation is cut short by Zeldris appearing, who pretends to return Gother to his prison. Deanne tells both Gothers to run while she holds him off. Deanne tries to fight but is defeated by a single kick. Even her magic gets sealed, leaving Deanne impressed with Zeldris' incredible strength. Zeldris then offered her, as Droll, the choice to either die or join the Ten Commandments, and even referenced the life of isolation and violence that Droll despised, something that Deanne found very familiar. Instead of choosing, though, she runs from it. This choice to run is deviant enough from the past that she comes back to the present, shocking Droll after telling about her choice. There, she says to King that she loves him and kisses him. Koran Arc After passing their trials, Deanne along with King finally reunite with the Seven Deadly Sins through Oslo's portal. Deanne tells the other Sins how happy she is to see them again, wishing that the Captain were still alive. When she realizes that she landed right on top of Meliodas, she's shocked at first to see him, but is quickly happy to see that he's alive. Well, barely after she landed on him. Meliodas tells Deanne that there's something different about her, to which she replies that she simply got her lost memories back, much to Gother's surprise, who claims that it's impossible to restore purged memories. Deanne says that he's wrong, that precious memories never disappear. Then she declares that she's going to help him reclaim his heart so that she could keep the promise she made 3,000 years ago. King Bartra explains the situation and shows Gother the heart he once had, causing him to remember scenes from his past. Gother then suddenly runs off. Deanne asks Merlin for one of her pills to shrink to human size and goes to chase after Gother with the other sins. As Gother's about to purge some memories once again, Deanne dropkicks him. When Deanne confronts him about his heart, Gother tells her not to interfere and he tries to hit her with energy arrows, but Deanne effortlessly dodges all of them. Gother is shocked when he realizes that Deanne's power level has risen as she was dodging his attacks, revealing that her power level is now 15,100. Deanne claims that she could easily keep dancing and make it higher, but she doesn't want to fight him, and she just wants to help him. Calculating his chances of winning is low, Gother tries to escape, but King blocks his way. He tries to purge his memories once again, but Deanne quickly stops him. Merlin appears and explains the reason behind Gother's behavior. Deanne gives words of encouragement to Gother. These words reach Gother, who regains his original magic power thanks to that, and heartfully thanks Deanne. Days later, Deanne, along with Elizabeth, visits Elaine to see if she's doing well. While they're chatting, Deanne suddenly remembers that she saw a person who was an Elizabeth lookalike and tells her. Later, the Sins have a celebration in the fixed boar hat and have a drink. During the celebration, the captain drinks a barrel of alcohol and she enables him, telling him to chug. After talking about how their allies have grown and how they're all together again, Deanne does a toast with the other Sins. Then she asks Gother how did the Gother, the demon, end the Holy War? However, Gother can't say anything yet, and Deanne apologizes for putting him in a tough position. As Merlin points out that Zeldris is still out there and that his power is unknown, Deanne tells him that the Demon King lent power to Zeldris and is his representative. The discussion ends ends with Meliodas telling them that freeing the people of the Commandment and liberating Camelot is the top priority right now. After Elizabeth tells Deanne and Elaine what Zeldris told her, Deanne becomes shocked that she was the Elizabeth from their training. Deanne tells her that it was rude of the Captain to brush off the conversation with Elizabeth. Deanne then tells Elizabeth that she'll help to get her memories back and is cheering for her. 
A while after the conversation, Deanne holds back Elizabeth, who's telling her that she needs to let Meliodas know about Barzad being bitten by a werefox. After Elizabeth faints, Deanne thinks that the curse moved to Elizabeth, only to be corrected by Meliodas, saying that her memories are returning. Deanne happily tells King about how Elizabeth was the reincarnation of the Elizabeth from 3,000 years ago. She's then silenced by Merlin, but continues to say that Meliodas was being mean for not answering Elizabeth's question. Deanne and the others become shocked when Meliodas tells them that Elizabeth will die in three days. Deanne starts crying when Meliodas explains the curses that he and Elizabeth have. She then asks him what'll happen when the curse is broken. Meliodas responds that his eternal life and her perpetual reincarnation will stop. Meliodas reminds Deanne of what they have to do right now. While the road to Orden is resumed, Deanne stays with Elizabeth feeling guilty for having driven her to recover her memories. When arriving at Koran, Meliodas is deceived by an illusion of Zeldris, which finishes in being captured by Melascula. Upon entering his search, the Sins are faced by revived skeletons of the victims of the massacre in Koran. At first, Deanne manages to deal with the skeletons without problems, but when the skeletons gain more strength from the negative emotions of Meliodas, her attacks become less effective. When the last soldier explodes when he can't bear all of the power of Meliodas, the vengeful souls of Koran begin to expand. Before the others could avoid it, the spirits end up possessing Deanne, consuming her, but not before asking the other Sins if she can kill them. King tries to reason with her, but Deanne unleashes her droll's dance, increasing her power level to 48,000. Everyone questions fighting against it, but King insists that they must stop the spirits that possess them. Although King tries to make her reason, Deanne sends him flying with a kick, saving himself only by Helmram's helmet. Escanor decides to take action and gives Deanne a hard blow to the belly. Deanne, however, is replenished enough to hit back. Gother decides to intervene to save Deanne and uses his invasion to enter into her mind. There, Gother finds Deanne's conscious being tormented by the guilt of putting Elizabeth's life in danger. Gother intends to get her out of that, but the vengeful spirits interfere by claiming Deanne's body as their own. After being expelled, Gother is hit hard by Gideon. Gother says that he won't let them do what they want with Deanne's body, but they happen to hurt Deanne with Gideon's tip. When the other sins are unable to stop them, the spirit of Helbrim intervenes, revealing himself as responsible for the massacre, and says that he's whom they should direct their hatred. Deanne crushes the helmet and thus destroys the spirit of Helbrim, but the spirits continue without appeasing their desire for revenge. However, an aroused Elizabeth appears and frees Deanne with Let There Be Light. Deanne asks why she would take a second chance on her, while Elizabeth says it's because she's her friend. After Elizabeth heals her wounds, Deanne is shocked to discover the relationship that Elizabeth maintained in the past with Merlin, calling her Big Sis Sis. There, they're interrupted by Melascula, who decides to face them all, assuming her giant serpent form. After Bon is saved by Elaine and Elizabeth, Deanne creates several spines of earth to force Melascula to go towards her and strike a blow in a hit from Gideon that leaves her totally wounded, leading Melascula to say that her strength was comparable to that of Droll. Deanne witnessed with concern the fight that broke out between Escanor and Meliodas, consumed by his assault mode and lack of emotion. After Escanor manages to contain Meliodas, Deanne calls him the strongest of them all, leading Escanor to point out that she said something very absurd. After Escanor falls prey to the wounds that he received in battle, Deanne is alarmed, believing that Merlin hurt him in one blow. Back in the Boar Hat, Merlin declares that Escanor will not be able to recover quickly from his wounds, and that Meliodas will be turned into an enemy when consumed by his lack of emotions. After locking Meliodas with Elizabeth in her perfect cube, Merlin declares that Deanne, King, and Gother will be the only ones who can fight if something happens on the way to Camelot. Outside, Deanne talks to King and Gother about what'll happen to their peers and hopes that Meliodas can return to what they were before. Prelude to the New Holy War Arc Following the road to Camelot, King turns the destroyed helmet of Helbram into an incline for Deanne, commemorating Helbram's last wish. Deanne is pleased with the gift, promising to treasure it. Deanne is also pleased with the earring that King made to Gother with a fake heart that he used to shroud, stating that it's a commemoration of Nadja. Although she's disappointed that Gother calls it a useless ring, Deanne is glad that Gother really appreciates it. At that moment, everyone is alarmed to see that night is consuming the sky. Determining the presence of an enemy in the boar hat, Deanne rushes to taking Elizabeth and Meliodas out. In that, an old demon appears to analyze the powers of all. King asks Gother if he knows him, and he and Deanne are shocked when he reveals that it's Meliodas' master, Chandler. Chandler proposes that they give Meliodas and Elizabeth and let them go, but they all refuse, stating that they'll never betray their companions. There, Chandler uses microscopic and Deanne to shrink her. Deanne affirms that even in her small size, she can fight. While Chandler unties his meteor works, King manages to escape and take Deanne with him into the sky. King and Gother join to create their combined technique, Celestial Arrow. However, Gother warns King that Chandler can use full counter, which alarms Deanne, and states that he must wait for him to give the signal to attack to strike. King says that he relies on him. 
Combining an illusion as a decoy, Gother manages to evade the full counter and make the hit of the Celestial Arrow effective. Deanne says that both of them are the best. When Chandler manages to fool them with an illusion of his own and reflect King's increase, he and Deanne are hit by the attack and shot down. Chandler then tries to kill Elizabeth with Dragon's Claw, but Deanne jumps up to protect her with heavy metal. Recognizing the giant clan technique, Chandler uses his usual countermeasure, Crimson Requiem. However, Deanne is saved from the Acid Wave by Bon, as well as Elizabeth, Meliodas, and King. When the battle between the Sins and Chandler is unleashed, the demon unleashes a shower of grudge blades on them, but King intercepts it with true increase. Meanwhile, Bon and Deanne run to face him directly, as Chandler states that they're not needed for Meliodas, Deanne states that they're the ones who want Meliodas happy. She delivers several blows to the demon while saying that to be happy, Meliodas needs Elizabeth the same way she needs King. Bon to Elaine, or Gother to Nadja. Chandler calls her ridiculous and tries to attack her with magic, but Bon is able to intervene, taking him from the back. When one of Chandler's grudge blades hits Elizabeth, Deanne reproaches her that doing so will cause Meliodas to die too. Chandler simply obliterates her with another blow, affirming that Meliodas won't die from something like that. Given the distraction caused by Hawk, Elizabeth has the opportunity to heal Deanne, Bon, and King of their injuries. King, with the help of Gother, gets a direct hit from True Chassifal on Chandler, apparently defeating him. Deanne and the others are horrified to see Gother give in to the effects of Absolute Order. There, Chandler recovers, assuming his true form and power. Seeing that they're lost, King decides to sacrifice himself to keep Chandler occupied while the rest escape. After leaving her with Elizabeth, Deanne begs King not to do it, but he insists that, after all of his failures, this allows him a last act to protect her and everyone else. When Chandler's attack on them is unleashed, Deanne and the rest are saved by Droll and Gloxenia, who take them back to the Boar Hat, saying that they leave the future of Britannia in their hands. After Droll and Gloxenia lock Chandler and his Ordora, King decides to help them fight him, and Deanne decides to do it even though she remains small. While the rest flee in the Boar Hat, Gloxenia restricts Deanne and King with his Emerald Octo, revealing that neither of them has enough magical power to keep fighting. There, Droll tells Deanne that he can't let her die because she must lead the Giant Clan. Deanne doesn't think she's capable of such a thing, but Droll insists that someone like her is the one who can make the Giant Clan prosper. Because of his leadership, they know only battle and death, and she could change such a thing. After this, Gloxinia sends them flying back to the Boar Hat. While they escape, Deanne and King feel that Droll and Gloxinia have died. While the Sins regroup, Deanne laments the death of Droll. Deanne laments that she wasn't there to help them in battle, and is also surprised to see that her true form is that of a tender girl. Hawk says that in that size he can even beat her, but Deanne sends him flying with a single punch. Merlin returns Deanne to her original size with absolute cancel, at the same time doing it with herself. Feeling the presence of Chandler approaching, everyone comes out to help Elizabeth and Meliodas. However, they find Chandler kneeling before an awoken Meliodas. Although Meliodas still has all of his memories, he decides to leave, with Elizabeth declaring that the Seven Deadly Sins have officially dissolved, leaving everyone stunned to reveal that he plans to become the Demon King to break the curse of Elizabeth. Deanne helps clean up the mess in the Boar Hat, depressed after all that's happened. Although Merlin tells them that Meliodas acts that way because his emotions were stolen by the Demon King, Deanne insists that they must do something. There, Merlin discovers that Hawk is a living portal to the purgatory that the Demon King has been using to spy on Meliodas. Deanne then suggests that they could reach Purgatory through Hawk to retrieve the emotions of Meliodas, but Merlin tells her that this would be an impossible task for them, given that it's impossible for a living being to survive in Purgatory, not to mention that it doesn't necessarily mean it's a way they could face the Demon King. However, the immortal Bon decides to go alone, although his chances of success are pretty much null. Deanne worries for him, but Bon insists and is sent to Purgatory by Merlin. Suddenly, everyone feels a powerful presence approaching, worrying about not being able to fight. However, Merlin comes out saying that she'll take care of it, since she has a card of her own, Melascula. Outside, the intruder is revealed to be Zeldris, who after seeing Merlin in her true form, reveals that he is the one who received the blessings of the Demon King and the Supreme Deity, leaving everyone in dismay. Although Deanne claims that they must fight against Zeldris, who is incredibly strong, Merlin orders them to let them handle the situation, flying to heaven to negotiate with Zeldris, leaving behind a magic plant to allow her companions to hear everything they say. With this, Deanne and the rest discover the past of Merlin, and that Meliodas will pretend to become the Demon King by absorbing all the commandments. When Merlin returns after deceiving Zeldris so that someone else will attack him in the vicinity, they teleport everyone to Camelot, where the hostages are fleeing, confused. Deanne helps everyone gather the hostages and send them to Leonis. There, Elizabeth appears to have escaped from Meliodas, however, creatures sent by Chandler attack and injure her. Deanne takes Elizabeth and kills the creatures. Elizabeth heals herself and reunites with her companions. There, she says that everyone should prevent Meliodas from becoming the Demon King. Deanne says that then she'll die, and Elizabeth hugs her and tells them that even if she dies, she'll see her in another life, and they'll be friends again. After rescuing the hostages, the Sins and Elizabeth return to Leonis, where they're well received. There, the four Archangels appear having possessed human bodies. 
Ludosio reveals himself to be inside Princess Margaret, alarming Deanne as she remembers her experience with the Archangel in the trial. In the end, Elizabeth forms an alliance with Ludosio to stop Meliodas from becoming the Demon King. While everyone returns to their homes, Deanne stays with King, taking care of Elaine. The next day, the Sins meet while Merlin announces that she's decided to go to Camelot on her own to find Arthur. Deanne thinks it's too dangerous. Merlin suddenly disappears and returns to the time with Arthur and Kath. Deanne reproaches her for actually going to Camelot alone, although Merlin says that the important thing is that she rescued Arthur. There, Arthur falls victim to the magic of Cusack and crosses his heart with his sword, to the horror of all present. New Holy War Arc after the death of Arthur, Merlin, Escanor, and Elizabeth attend the meeting to decide what the strategy is for the Holy War. Deanne wishes them luck as they leave, noting that Escanor is acting strange. While everyone is preparing for the Holy War, Deanne tells King how good she feels with the new clothes that Merlin made for them all, commenting how comfortable and great they are for moving around in. Deanne still claims that the clothes King made her will always be her treasure, though. King tries to ask Deanne to marry her after the war, but Escanor interrupts them by claiming that they're romantics before a great battle. Deanne joins the Search and Destroy force with King and Gother as representatives of the Seven Deadly Sins, marching directly to Camelot to face the Demon Clan army. When the battle is unleashed and the Holy Knights have problems, Deanne impresses everyone by wiping out almost the entire army. An Albion manages to get over and shoot a beam of energy, but Deanne is protected with heavy metal and hits a hard blow with Gideon. There, King and Deanne recognize the Omega Arc of Sariel and Tarmiel that manages to eliminate much of the Demon Army. In the end, the group manages to eliminate the near-complete Demon Army. Deanne suffers some injuries that are quickly healed by Elizabeth. King and Deanne make fun of Hauser's new leadership attitude. Seeing the arrogant attitude of several of the Holy Knights, Deanne and King point out that everyone ought to be as composed as Ludosiel. Both get upset when Death Pierce criticizes Elizabeth's words, just as they're surprised to discover that Elizabeth was reasoning with the demons throughout the battle. King and Deanne are alarmed when suddenly Derriere falls on the battlefield. Then, Estorosa appears, chasing her and releasing his Black Hound, gobbling up the battlefield in Purgatory Fire. Deanne then takes everyone underground to protect them, except Elizabeth and Derriere. When Sariel and Tarmiel have apparently defeated Estorosa, King and Deanne are alarmed to see that Estorosa follows them, as well as their new transformation and level of power. When Estorosa manages to overcome the Archangels and tries to take Elizabeth away, Deanne intervenes by creating her Diamond Shield to protect Elizabeth and Gila, while King attacks Estorosa. However, King's attack is ineffective, just as Estorosa easily breaks Deanne's wall and hurts Gila. After eliminating Sariel and Tarmiel for a second time, King and Deanne intend to attack him, but are stopped by Elizabeth. There, the princess decides to give herself to Estorosa to prevent him from continuing to kill everyone, being taken away from the battlefield by the demon. When everyone regroups, King offers to go rescue Elizabeth. Deanne worries about him going alone, but then Tarmiel and Sariel, who recover their original bodies, decide to join him. Deanne is still worried for them, but King says not to do so. When Derriere tries to join too, Deanne is shown happy when King says that he trusts her, recalling their experience during the trial. At some point, upon seeing what happened in the distance, Deanne decides to separate from the rest of the knights and is transported to Oslo to the Heaven's Theater, where King, Elizabeth, Hawk, and Gother are in a desperate situation in their battle. Deanne declares that the situation is much worse than she expected, while blocking the reign of light and darkness with her heavy metal. King asks what she's doing there, and Deanne says that they both promise to be together forever. Deanne shows up, saying that she's ready for battle. While continuing to block the rays with her Gideon, Deanne asks to know what's happening there. Gother uses broadcast to quickly update her. Deanne is shocked to discover that Estorosa is actually Mael of the Four Archangels, altered to end the Holy War 3,000 years ago, and learns of the deaths of Sariel, Tarmiel, and Derriere. Deanne is too overwhelmed to perceive the magic power of Mael. When a Mael transformed by the commandments appears, Deanne along with the rest is obliterated by Jiai no Kogyoku. King asks Elizabeth to hurry up and heal Deanne's wounds, however, Deanne says that she's in no pain and begins to feel sleepy. There, King begins to feel the same way and falls asleep next to Deanne. Gother manages to use his sense opener to undo the effects of the attack that turned pain into pleasure and sleep. Deanne jumps behind Mael next to King, Elizabeth, and Gother thanking Gother for getting her back to his senses. Elizabeth quickly heals them all, and Gother gives them and Deanne the signal to carry out their combined technique. While King attacks Mael with Yggdra Cloth and Gother creates many illusions of him to confuse him, Deanne proceeds to use her Droll's Dance to gradually increase King's power. Deanne is glad to see how this technique initially works. However, Mael manages to use his Shinjutsu no Kane to dispel the illusions and to remove King. Then, using the commandment of reticence, Mael creates his Chinmoku no Ugama, slashing King and Deanne with it. Deanne regrets her carelessness and tries to use her heavy metal to protect herself. However, she's unable to use her technique, being forced to evade sickle attacks. 
Gother recognizes the seal formed on Deanne's leg and the cursed seal of reticence that has sealed the magic of Deanne and King. Elizabeth proceeds to heal Deanne's leg and eliminate the seal, but Mael begins to prepare a Jai no Kogyoku. Deanne is alarmed to see that Gother intends to self-destruct to stop Mael, but is soon incapacitated by Junketsu no Ko. Mael proceeds to use his Jai no Kogyoku. Dian, still not finished after her healing, can do nothing but watch as Oslo decides to sacrifice his life by receiving the attack in full. Dian catches Oslo's body when he falls and sadly leaves him in front of King. Mael shoots another attack again, however the cursed seal is removed just in time for Dian to use Gideon's special ability, Lightning Rod, to disperse the explosion on the Earth. Hawk asks why she's never used such a useful and powerful technique before, revealing that the redirected power seriously harms the Earth and the creatures that inhabit it. Deanne says that she never wanted to use that technique for that reason, but since they're in an artificial structure created with magic, it should be fine. Even so, Deanne points out that the attack destabilized the center of the Heaven's Theater, and with another attack, it ends up breaking apart. Mael launches another attack at Deanne, and she once again uses Lightning Rod to redirect it. There, the Heaven's Theater is broken into pieces and all fall into the void. Deanne is saved by Elizabeth, who picks her up with her goddess wings. Deanne asks her to forget about her and save King, who can't fly with his magic still sealed. Hawk flies to save him, and Deanne tells him that she's counting on him. Seeing that Elizabeth gradually loses altitude by not being able to support their weight, Deanne asks her to leave her, but Elizabeth refuses. Mael then appears behind Elizabeth, but is beaten away by a transformed king. Deanne is shocked to see him in his new form with his full wings. Seeing his completely different aura, Deanne wonders if he really is the king that she knows. When King affirms that he still is himself, Deanne is surprised to understand that he's read her heart. Mael launches another attack, however. Deanne and Elizabeth are protected by King's true pollen garden. Deanne is alarmed that King can't defend himself against Mael while using Chastafall to protect them, but to Deanne's astonishment, King is able to use the other forms of Chastafall at the same time. After Gother manages to return Mael to normal, Deanne, King, Elizabeth, and Hawk contemplate the terrible release of demon power from Camelot. When they decide to go there, a strange light comes out of Hawk's eyes, revealing to be Bon, who's finally returned from Purgatory. While waiting for Elizabeth and Gother to return from their talk with Mael, King remarks the urgency of reaching Camelot. On the way, the group feels another great magic power reaching Camelot, revealed to be the four commandments that Mael have already expelled, who are coming to rejoin with the five that Meliodas possesses. As Elizabeth is alarmed for Meliodas becoming the Demon King if he absorbs all of them, Deanne points out that it'll be fine since Merlin still has Melasculus commandment, but Mael states that it won't make a difference since the commandments will naturally attract each other. When Escanor is defeated by the original demon and sent flying, Mael catches and saves him. Deanne worries for Escanor's injuries, lending him to blame himself. When Escanor offers Mael to give back Sunshine to him, Deanne is surprised to discover that Sunshine was originally Mael's grace. Upon reaching Camelot, Deanne uses several rock spikes to, along with Elizabeth and King, help Ludosiel to protect Merlin from Zeldris's dark matter. When Zeldris starts to attack under desperation to stop Merlin, Deanne and the others try to defend her until King uses True Pollen Garden to protect everyone. After Zeldris is defeated by Mael and the Chrono Coffin is completed, Deanne celebrates the end of the Holy War with her friends. However, when Hawk discovers that the cocoon is already empty, Deanne, along with everyone else, is surprised by the incredible darkness coming from the Meliodas, now turned Demon King. Meliodas is revealed to have been turned into his father's vessel, revealing that it was the Demon King's plan from the beginning in creating the commandments and make Meliodas absorb them to take his young and stronger body for himself. As the Demon King pretends to kill Elizabeth, Gother takes her out of his attack for Merlin to use Perfect Cube to protect the three along with Hendrickson and Escanor. Merlin warns Deanne and King that magical attacks don't work on the Demon King, so Deanne must use Gideon to attack him along with King and Mael, claiming that they'll protect Elizabeth at any cost. However, none of them pose a serious threat to the Demon King, who easily incapacitates everyone, including Deanne. When Bond saves Hawk from being killed, Deanne shows that she's happy to see him. As the Demon King releases a toxic and caustic storm over the area, Elizabeth and the Sins are protected by King's True Pollen Garden. Elizabeth asks Deanne if everyone is fine, but she says that Bond is still outside. After the storm is stopped by Bond and he fights the Demon King, Deanne is happy to feel Meliodas fighting the Demon King from the inside. Seeing Bond fight against the Demon King, Hawk encourages him to win, but Deanne reminds him that he's in Meliodas's body. Deanne is alarmed when the Demon King manages to get the upper hand. Although he says that voices could never reach the real Meliodas, Gother manages to use his invasion and take Elizabeth and the other sins into the spiritual world where Meliodas is confronting the Demon King. Crying of happiness to meet Meliodas, Deanne and the others are protected from the Demon King both by Meliodas in the spiritual world and by Bon in the real world. As Meliodas gains new strength from his friends and becomes able to overpower the Demon King, he asks them to go back and help Bon. 
As they return to the real world, Merlin recognizes that the Demon King is in a desperate death throw, pretending to take Meliodas with him in his demise. Merlin states that they must get rid of the Demon King from Meliodas' body right now. Bond manages to intercept and stop his death throws, and then sends him flying with a kick. King Elizabeth and Merlin then combine their techniques in their, combined technique, triple prison, leaving the Demon King trapped. He, however, manages to break free in a berserk state with his ultimate technique. There, Deanne surprises him with Diamond Tower, giving Bond the opening to give the Demon King the final blow. With a strong fist that sends the Demon King in to break the diamond, he's finally defeated and erased from the body of Meliodas. Despite their victory, the Sins are saddened that with the destruction of the Demon King, they've missed the opportunity to break Elizabeth's curse. Though she tells them that it's already been done, because what she wanted most was for Meliodas to be the same since she would never see him again if he became the Demon King. Elizabeth says that she can't always reincarnate if she dies, but Merlin asks if she's really okay with that. There, Meliodas surprises everyone by claiming that he actually acquired the power to break the curse while escaping from Purgatory. Despite the dissonance of this and Bond, Merlin uses her cursed discovery for the curses of Meliodas and Elizabeth to take physical form. There, Meliodas assumes the appearance he had when he was the Demon King, and tells Elizabeth that despite having made her wait 3,000 years to fulfill the promise he made her, he's finally going to do it. Meliodas easily destroys the two curses, and with that, Elizabeth embraces him with joy since his long journey has ended, but of course, it's rectified that their trip together has only just begun. Demon King Arc With the end of the Holy War, the Sins return to Leonis, and that night, all attend the celebration in the new Boar Hat. There, Deanne is seen serving drinks with King. Deanne gives Gila, Zeal, and Jericho some soft drinks. The day after the end of the Holy War, Deanne joins Elizabeth and the rest of the Sins and the Boar Hat to prepare for their journey of stocking up across Britannia. As they make up a picnic, Deanne remains with Elizabeth, Merlin, and Elaine while the men go for food in the forest. Deanne starts to talk about their future children and how cute Elizabeth and Meliodas' will be. Elaine tries to change the subject, but then Deanne wonders out loud that if Meliodas will become Leonis royalty if he marries Elizabeth. Deanne asks if Meliodas would feel more comfortable as captain or as an innkeeper, that way they could still see him anytime they want. Deanne finally breaks down in tears, not wanting it to be true that Meliodas is going to leave them, something that everybody's already put together by this point. Elaine tries to comfort her. She's then surprised when Elizabeth reveals that she already knows all this, but she's fine with it. Deanne questions how could she be fine with the fact that the one she loves will disappear from the world. Elizabeth states that if Meliodas forces himself to stay, it'll only be trouble and that there's nothing to do about it. Deanne says that this is heartless. Upon returning to Leonis, Deanne goes with her friends to a meeting organized by King Bartra. There, he asks Meliodas to marry Elizabeth and become the king. Bartra ensures that Elizabeth won't have any objection, but she says that she can't accept. Everyone is stunned when Elizabeth reveals that she plans to go to the demon realm with Meliodas. The Sins meet in the Boar Hat discussing what happened. A drunk Deanne asks Merlin many times what the demon realm is like, and she explains to her that it's a polluted and corrupted land covered in miasma which no other race other than the demon clan can survive, as the bodies of other races are prone to rot and decay there. But Elizabeth should be fine thanks to her powers. Meliodas agrees with Merlin that Elizabeth was always that determined, even when she presented him with the demon-hating stigma 3,000 years ago. Gother asks him if he has no regrets in this world, and Meliodas says that he would have liked to have seen his son have a scuffle with Bonds, but he has a mountain of other regrets as well. Since even though the war was stopped for the time being, the hatred between the Demon Clan and the other races hasn't completely disappeared, not to mention those lost during the war, including Arthur, who Meliodas claims would have been a magnificent king. Meliodas laments for having only worried for the last millennia to break the curse and have his little brother die twice, saying that he deserves to be in hell for all this. The Sins deny him this, claiming that he's a good person. Deanne states that Elizabeth would never have fallen in love with him otherwise. Meliodas thanks them, affirming that he is who he is today thanks to the fact that the six of them were always there for him. There, Meliodas declares that the Seven Deadly Sins have officially disbanded. Again. The next day, Elizabeth and Meliodas have an emotional farewell at the entrance of the Demon Realm. Deanne apologizes to Elizabeth for calling her heartless and asks her not to hate her. Elizabeth hugs her and assures her that they'll always be friends and asks her to remain next to King. However, before being able to cross the entrance, a gigantic rock is detached from a nearby boulder and falls over Elizabeth, seemingly crushing her to death. Everyone, especially Meliodas, can't help but look with horror, because the curse apparently was not broken after all. However, Elizabeth is saved at the last second by Merlin, who teleports her to safety just in time. Merlin then uses Curse Discovery to reveal that Elizabeth's curse was actually restored. Meliodas tries to destroy it once more, but as soon as he does, the curse regenerates again. Meliodas concludes that this is because since the curse was put out by the Demon King and it continues to exist, 
That must mean that the Demon King is still alive. Merlin and Gother wonder how this can be, given that the Commandments have no vessel. King and Deanne wonder who could be able to withstand the Commandments when not even Mael was able to sustain four of them. Elizabeth and Meliodas conclude that Zeldris, the only one besides Meliodas capable of resisting the Commandments, has now become the vessel of the Demon King. Elizabeth and the Sins return to the Boar Hat to discuss the situation of the Demon King still being alive. When Merlin asks who could be the new vessel of the Demon King, Meliodas claims to not know, though, you know, he's already figured out that it's Zeldris. There, King and Deanne feel that the entrance to the Demon Realm is being opened again, to which Merlin recognizes is to invoke an Endura. King asks Hawk and Escanor to report the situation to the King and the Great Holy Knights, while he and the other Sins face the Endura and Meliodas protects Elizabeth, a last point that Deanne makes clear. In the center of Britannia, the Sins face the giant Endura that was summoned. Deanne gets frightened by the bug-like appearance of the demon. While it accumulates a bulbing in its tail, King notices several magical auras building up there, but Gother points out that those are life forces. The Endura then releases a big object from its tail that explodes and scatters in multiple small objects, which greatly grosses out Deanne. Merlin then discovers that they are in fact the Endura offspring. Knowing that the babies will expand throughout Britannia, King determines that they must stop them. Since their attacks can't reach them, Deanne and Gother let King and Merlin take care of eliminating the babies, but Gother soon sees that there are too many and that they caused a disaster by dispersing through Britannia. King comes to the conclusion that his only option is to use Sunflower to incinerate the entire area, but Deanne warns him that it would also just kill all the humans and animals around. King insists that it's the only way out, but Bond jumps in saying that he'll take care of it. Gother asks Merlin if Bond is wielding his sacred treasure, which Merlin confirms. Using it, Bond manages to eliminate thousands of babies with an incredibly extended and powerful assault hunt. The Endura launches an attack, but the Sins manage to finish it off with a combination of their attacks, though Deanne attacks at first. In Lake Salisbury, in the middle of his fight with Meliodas, the Demon King notices that something is approaching at high speed. This results to be the heads of the Endura that Bond, King, Deanne, Gother, and Merlin have launched towards him. Meliodas wonders why they're there, to which Elizabeth says that they're going to come for him. With the arrival of the Five, Deanne asks Meliodas and Elizabeth why do they act like such strangers. Meliodas angrily says that it's not their fight and orders them to return, but all of the Sins express their desire to help. Deanne gets a funny feeling that Gother is still unable to read the vibe when he says that they must fight the Demon King anyways if he loses. Deanne says that she's angry since they're friends so they must rely more on them. Elizabeth asks forgiveness but also asks them to understand Meliodas' feelings since he doesn't want them involved in all of that anymore because he loves them. As the Demon King is taken back from a combined attack of Merlin and Elizabeth, Merlin tells Gother to take Meliodas inside the Demon King's soul and detach him from Zeldris while they distract him. Not wanting to allow it, the Demon King launches several dark slashes that Meliodas, Bon, and King are forced to intercept. The Demon King then attacks the others. Merlin teleports to avoid him while Bon takes Deanne, Gother, and Elizabeth. King uses true pollen garden to protect everyone, but is unable to hold on to the Demon King's attacks long enough for Gother to use his power. Merlin states that fighting the Demon King and protecting Gother and Meliodas' bodies at the same time is too difficult for them to do it. Suddenly, Escanor, having regained his magic power, stops a lunge of the Demon King with his arm. As he recites a poem about how he's decided to offer his life for his companions, Meliodas shouts for him to stop because of what'll happen if he stays that way. As he fights the Demon King, Escanor overcomes him with Divine Sword Escanor, saying that killing a god is the only way the fire inside him will go out. Deanne questions that claim, but Escanor only tells Meliodas to save his brother while he manages the situation, since he won't be able to continue in that world if he accidentally kills the Demon King. As Gother takes Meliodas into the spiritual world, Deanne is protected along their bodies and Elizabeth in Merlin's perfect cube. When Gelda is beheaded by the Demon King, Deanne is frightened and Elizabeth covers her eyes trying not to see it. However, Deanne is startled to see that Gelda survived being decapitated. When King, Bon, and Escanor are wounded by the Demon King, Elizabeth asks Merlin to release her perfect cube. Deanne remarks the risk of her curse, but Elizabeth insists Merlin do it, and Elizabeth uses Invigorate to heal the three fighters. As the battle gets worse, Deanne states that the Demon King is receiving no damage, and the lake is giving him unlimited magic. Merlin states that if the battle goes on, the effect of the power on Meliodas and the Demon King might destroy Britannia as a whole. A sudden whirlpool sucks Elizabeth and separates Deanne and the others from her, as a lightning bolt is about to fall over the princess. Fortunately, Meliodas returns from the spirit world in time to full counter the lightning towards the Demon King. Deanne laments that, compared to how brave Elizabeth is, she's pathetic, even after asking her to rely more on her. Deanne then asks Merlin to restore her to her actual size, and then begins performing Droll's Dance. As the Demon King acknowledges that it's the technique that allows the giants to bring their fighting power to its limits, he attacks her with his darkness, but King intercepts. As her dance ends, Deanne asks Droll to give her the power to protect her loved ones. Deanne then unleashes Mother Creation, causing an earthquake that destroys all the land near the lake and lifting an infinity of debris. Deanne throws some of it at the Demon King, but he destroys them, making fun of an insignificant giant girl daring to challenge him. 
However, Deanne manages to wrap him up with so much debris that the Demon King is lifted from the lake. Deanne claims that she used to be a loner who hated fighting, but now she's transformed. The Demon King tries to regain his composure, but Deanne continues to throw debris, remarking that her friends, Elizabeth Hawk and especially King, always protected her and they were always with her. The Demon King states that there's no reason for her to defeat him, but Meliodas and Elizabeth claim that he's wrong and that moves Deanne. She then affirms that she is the new giant queen and for the future of her people that Droll entrusted to her, she can't lose. However, she states that there's a greater reason for why she can't lose, and that's her dream of living with King. King then asks Deanne to marry him once they defeat the Demon King. Deanne blushes and screaming that of course she will, she throws all of the rubble that manages to take the Demon King out of Lake Salisbury, thus cutting off his source of magic. The Sins regroup as Meliodas declares that their mission to end the Demon King will now begin. When Escanor becomes the One, Deanne tries to make Escanor accept that they'll help him, but Escanor warns her not to forgive the disturbance and declares that the moment will finally come. By witnessing the fight that breaks out, Deanne can't believe that the Demon King can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Escanor as the One. Goth remarks that the Demon King is taking damage from Escanor's blow, but Bond says that the problem is time. The Demon King proceeds to bury a blow to Escanor, but surprisingly, Escanor's power doesn't diminish despite having spent his time as the One, and King wonders how it's possible for him to continue. Meliodas reveals that Escanor is turning his own vital life force into magic power, basically burning his own life. Knowing that he means he'll die, Deanne says that they should stop him. After Bond, Meliodas, and King save Escanor from the Demon King, Deanne listens to the conversation between Meliodas and Escanor. The Demon King is released, creating a giant monster of darkness. Escanor jumps to face him, claiming he made an oath that day and will keep it, that with the life he once wanted to leave, he goes to stake for him and his friends, the Seven Deadly Sins. Meliodas also jumps into his assault mode, saying that if he's going to put his life on the line for them, then the only right thing is for them to do the same for him. The Sins agree, telling Escanor that he hasn't been alone for a long time. Combining their techniques, the Sins manage to destroy the Monster of Darkness. Escanor then tells everyone that it's too late to back out, so he will give everyone an order, give him the honor of fighting at their side. Meliodas cries out, saying that they're a team until the bitter end. The Sins together are able to take the Demon King until his limit. There, with the Demon King practically defeated in both the spirit world and in the real world, the Commandments begin to leave Zeldris' body until they eventually detach from him, allowing Zeldris to recover his physical body. However, the Demon King's conscience refuses to let his vessel go and tries to retrieve it. However, Bond snatches Zeldris away before the Commandments can possess him again. Enraged, the Demon King rises and saying that they'll observe him, the Commandments separate and disperse in the surrounding area. Deanne and King notice that they're taking over every living being, rock, and hill. Thus, the Demon King stands with a new gigantic and monstrous vessel created from the same land of Britannia. King protects Deanne from the expansive force with his pollen garden. The Demon King says that he can see the faces of the people in Britannia, crumpled in fear, all thanks to the sinful follies they've committed. He then shouts for them to be resigned to their deaths because there's no greater crime than opposing the Demon King. However, the Seven Deadly Sins make a completely confident face in response. The Demon Kings demand to know why they have that expression on their faces, to which Deanne says that she's not afraid because all of her friends are there. As the Sins launch the attack, the Demon King uses Death Zero to immobilize them with gravity pressure. He tells them to be slowly crushed out of existence as insects that have no chance against a mountain, as Merlin starts making some chance. The Demon King continues to make pressure in his technique, claiming that he'll end the Holy War by taking the life forms within that land as a vessel. Merlin then uses Limit Breaker, rising hers and her companion's magic power to the absolute top, breaking the Death Zero in the process, but she warns her friends that all must have to rest for a week after that, which seems like kind of a small price to pay. Deanne launches her Jet Hammer along the other Sin's strongest techniques that Merlin combines into a single powerful attack using power conversion Unify. The Demon King believes that his power, the Ruler, will protect him, but Merlin reveals that the killer switch that Gother had used was not an attack, but a spell that negates his power. The Demon King tries to destroy the combined attack with Death Zero, but the attack proves to be too powerful as Gother remarks that he's not able to overcome the resolve within their hearts. Meliodas creates various clones that repeatedly use full counter in the combined attack, sending it back at the Demon King, multiplying its power each time. The Demon King cries that if the attack hits him again, Britannia will be damaged. However, with Merlin's approval, Meliodas sends the attack to the Demon King, killing him once and for all. In the resultant destruction, King uses True Pollen Garden to protect the rest of the Sins. Then he and the Sins fall out of exhaustion as a result of Merlin's power, Limit Breaker. As Myel and Elizabeth heal them, Deanne asks Gother if he's fine and shows that his doll body doesn't feel pain, but it could break if he moves too much. Deanne then calls for Meliodas to show that the commandments are still there. Merlin explains that despite defeating the Demon King, his power can revive after decades or centuries. Deanne says that centuries are going to fly by in no time, to which King agrees, but Bond doesn't. Meliodas then unleashes his true magical power to destroy the Commandments, causing a resonating between the two Demon Kings that affect the area. 
While everyone watches Zeldris and Gelda fly away, Escanor says it's time for him to do the same, but metaphorically, you know, because he's dying. Sad, everyone vows to stay together until the end, which won't be for very long because Escanor's body has been burned to the point that it disintegrates and can no longer move. Escanor says that he has no regrets in his life and thanks everyone for allowing him to meet them. He gives each person a few last words and he wishes Deanne and King happiness despite not being able to attend their wedding. King of Chaos arc. Upon returning to Leonis, the Sins join the celebration banquet in the castle. There, everyone present murmurs about the burns on Merlin's face. Elizabeth then approaches her, saying that they can go outside to treat her wound if she finds it too loud there. Merlin asks if her scars really look that bad, and Elizabeth says that she doesn't care as long as she's okay with them. Deanne, King, and Gother all say the same thing. Deanne then happily states that despite the sadness about Escanor, all of the Sins have achieved their goals, with herself having received King's proposal. She ends up realizing that she never knew what Merlin's goal was, since she never really talked to them about it. King and Bond stress that she couldn't have been working 3,000 years for nothing, and Deanne says that if she tells them, they'll help her out for sure. Merlin then declares that as comrades of fate, everyone deserves to know and see it. Merlin then teleports the Sins and Elizabeth to Lake Salisbury, where they find Hawk Mama in front of the orb of water that used to be the lake. Merlin then says it's time to start, and when Meliodas asks her what, Merlin surprises everyone by declaring that she refers to Arthur's awakening. Upon putting herself over the lake, Merlin removes Arthur's body, still pierced by Excalibur from the boar hat. She says that all the preparations are ready, and asks the princess if she's ready, to which a voice from the lake asks if it's finally time to meet their master. As the lake water begins to shine and its light reaches Excalibur, Merlin tells Arthur that she was wrong, since the sword was not the one that would kill him, but it's actually the key to advancing him to his new stage. After an explosion of light, Arthur wakes up having been revived. Merlin says that humans are the most polarizing of all races because they possess the qualities of good and light at the same time as evil and darkness. Their very existence is the essence of contradiction, and this contradiction is a form of chaos. Meliodas demands Merlin tell him what she did to Arthur, to which she replies that she already told him. Her goal is to awake Arthur, but as the King of Chaos. Arthur tells her that he doesn't understand and that his body hurts and he asks for help. As his eyes turn black, Arthur starts screaming desperately in pain, to which Meliodas flies to help him. However, seeing him, Arthur remembers that the last time he saw him, he had betrayed his companions and allied with the Demon Clan. A strange magic leaves Arthur, wrapping everything up, and his surroundings suddenly transform into a bizarre and meaningless scenario. When the sins are separated in the deformed reality, Elizabeth, Deanne, and Hawk remain in a single tower, wondering what's happening. Arthur then manages to calm down, and reality returns to normal. Meliodas then asks Merlin what she did to Arthur, and what she means by chaos. Merlin explains that chaos is a pure and at the same time impure power of darkness feared even by demons, and light worshipped even by goddesses. An immense power that's believed that a single intention brought about the world and races from nothingness, including the Demon King and the Supreme Deity. Merlin declares that Arthur commands chaos, and that he is the king that will lead Britannia to a new world. Meliodas asks why she would awaken a power that's both a blessing and a curse, and demands to know what her desire is. The being of the lake, revealing herself as the Lady of the Lake and the Priestess of Chaos, reveals that Merlin hid the truth about Chaos from everyone, including Meliodas. She then goes on to tell Merlin's past about her difficult life and her encounter with Meliodas. When the Lady of the Lake explains that Merlin sought all of her life to resurrect Chaos and that she used the Seven Deadly Sins to kill the Demon King, Deanne reacts very angrily, stating that Merlin is their comrade and that she doesn't know what she's saying. However, the Lady of the Lake reveals that Merlin was the one who asked the giant craftsman Dabuzu to create the Coffin of Eternal Darkness to seal the Demon King and the Supreme Deity, also deliberately delaying the spell of the Chrono Coffin for the Demon King to possess Meliodas, since she was the one who reactivated Elizabeth's curse after Meliodas destroyed it, and finally made Meliodas launch their combined attack on the lake, all in order to achieve her goal. Deanne and King are shocked in disbelief at all that, and King asks Merlin to say something. Merlin explains that to revive Chaos, it wasn't enough to seal the Demon King and the Supreme Deity, one of the two had to be completely destroyed to disrupt the balance. Bond then asks if she knew that the Demon King would possess Meliodas and still allowed it. Merlin then adds that she needed another condition, an explosive magic to wake Arthur with the key, and to do that they had to send the attack back to the lake. She also states that she reactivated the curse since she can't allow Meliodas to abandon the mission of destroying the Demon King. Deanne breaks into tears upon discovering the truth. When Meliodas reproaches Merlin for using the Seven Deadly Sins to revive a being that may not even exist, the Lady of the Lake states that Chaos definitely exists, and that they've already been face to face with it for a long time. When Deanne and the rest don't seem to understand, the Lady of the Lake reveals that they've been traveling on it all this time, and been waiting patiently for its resurrection, leaving everyone shocked to see that she refers to Hawk Mama. There, Hawk Mama is revealed to be a moss shell, whose content, Chaos, is now inside Arthur. Arthur then has another episode, altering reality without noticing it. 
When Kath shows itself happy to be Arthur, he then devours one of Arthur's arms, and when it transforms into a monstrous form, the Lady of the Lake tells him that they must retrieve their arm, or they'll soon know how powerful even a fragment of chaos can be. Deanne asks why Kath did this if he's supposed to be Arthur's friend. While Elizabeth heals Arthur, the Lady of the Lake reveals the true identity of the monster Kath Palag, who was after the power of chaos within Arthur. The monster then asks an affected Arthur if he can eat him now, creating a pocket dimension with a fragment of chaos he devoured, sucking Arthur, Elizabeth, and the Sins into it. After Arthur destroys the dimension and Kath Palag with a new Excalibur, he faints from tiredness in Merlin's arms. Elizabeth tells Merlin that they should take him to the kingdom, but Merlin just thanks her for healing him, and before Elizabeth can reply, she teleports them all away, claiming she can't keep up with them. As everyone returns to Leonis, Deanne asks why Merlin and Arthur were left behind, to which King says that it would have been awkward if they had come with them after what happened. While everyone laments later, Deanne asks if the Seven Deadly Sins are truly over this time, to which Bond says, well, everything has to end, leaving Deanne even more depressed when he mentions that Escanor is gone. While the others express their concerns, Meliodas says they can't leave Merlin and Arthur alone. Although King believes they'll be fine, Meliodas declares that Chaos has not gone yet, and that after witnessing the power that Arthur has, if he isn't able to control it and yields it to his own darkness, he'll end up turning Britannia into a living hell and becoming a new threat. Meliodas says that regardless of anything, they cannot leave Chaos unseen and must ensure that Merlin takes responsibility for what she did. When Gother asks him what he plans to do with Merlin, everyone feels great magic in the direction of Arthur and Merlin. When Kath, who is fighting Merlin, releases a large bunch of beams from his mouth over her, they're all reflected by Meliodas his full counter. Surprised, Merlin is healed by Elizabeth, asking both of them why they're there. Elizabeth tells her that it's not just them, revealing that all of the other sins came with them. Merlin rushes to help Arthur, confirming that he's only unconscious. Meliodas tells Merlin that they'll make her take responsibility for resuscitating Chaos, so she must devote the rest of her life to protecting and guiding Arthur. Merlin says that they didn't have to come here to tell her that, because that was already her plan. Meliodas adds that they also have the responsibility of forgiving her foolishness, so he asks her to allow them to protect her. Merlin thanks him by saying that she's indebted to everyone. As Kath regenerates, he manages to trap everyone except Arthur and Meliodas inside visions. Deanne and the rest wake up when Arthur begins to absorb Kath. After returning to reality, everyone agrees to support Arthur and his creation of an everlasting kingdom. After defeating Kath, the Sins reunite in the streets of Leonis, and they decide to part in their own ways. Deanne and Elizabeth talk about how wonderful a kingdom of fairies and giants will be. King invites everyone to his wedding with Deanne that they promise they're going to perform soon, but Bond jokes that no one can really tell when a fairy and a giant believe soon is. After always vowing to be friends and comrades, King and Deanne leave just like the other Sins. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.